This is the Giant Mouse Ace Sonoma V2, and this is Clark the Knife. My goal with these reviews is to get you in and out in as close to 15 minutes as possible with everything you need to know about this knife to make an informed purchase decision. I'm doing my reviews in five sections. One, specs. Two, what it does well. Three, where it struggles. Four, fit, finish, and value. And five, conclusions. You'll see down here in the bottom right corner, see this little ace here, ace two, three, four, five. If you want to skip ahead in the video, you can use that little marker in the bottom right to see exactly which section I'm on. And with that, we're going to start with specs. First, this knife is the V2 of the Sonoma. The V1 Sonoma was actually the first high-end knife I ever purchased. It came out a few years ago, I want to say 2019, something like that. And it was one of the models that sort of put Giant Mouse on the map. I no longer have that knife. I haven't had it for years. That V1 A Sonoma was a flipper titanium frame lock made by Riot. It had one major issue, which was the lock. Picture this is a frame lock instead of a liner lock. The V1, its fatal flaw, and just about every reviewer mentioned this, was that this fra the frame lock was super sensitive to lock bar pressure. What that means is you got your detent ball here. You can see your detent ball right in there. Look at that little ball. If you got a frame lock and you're putting pressure on that lock bar, what it does is you push the detent into the knife blade. And what would happen in the V1 is you would grip the knife here. You would put pressure on that lock bar. In fact, I can show it here with something like a Sebenza. When you open this knife up, and you grip that, you push this down, you're pushing into, pushing that detent ball into the tang of the blade. You're not doing it with a Sebenza because how they do their detent ball, but you get what I mean. And that thing would bind up. The V1 was very hard. If you were gripping it the wrong way, the blade basically wouldn't open. So for V2, they made a handful of big changes. The blade is pretty much the same. The flipper tab is pretty much the same. Um, I recall the choil being pretty much the same as well. This one is an LMAX blade seal, but the biggest change is this handle, rather than being a flat, flat top and flat bottom slab of titanium with big bevels, it's now contoured micarta. You can also get this in G10, but this version here is an OD green micarta. This is a 3.4 inch blade, so not a small knife. 138 thousandths on the blade stock. Again, green canvas micarta, you've got LMAX as the steel here. It is marked right there, right below your ace. And they do a brass backspacer, as Giant Mouse tends to do. And by the way, a little attention to this backspacer here. I love the way that Giant Mouse does their backspacers because they serve two purposes. One, aesthetically, they're just very nice. and it, they, it makes their lanyard hole a real design decision, not something that's just stuck in there. They always add a bit of jimping there too, and it's nicely distressed even on top of that. But it also helps balance the knife. Giant Mouse tends to run, especially these days, when, when they've uh, skeletonized a lot of the liners and made inset liners rather than the thick liners they used to use, they often have relatively heavy blades. They're either large or they're thick and somewhat lighter handles. So putting a chunk of brass back here helps balance the knife. And this knife does balance very well. Knife as a whole is 3.4 ounces. Now Giant Mouse doesn't officially disclose the country of origin for this. But based on looks, feel, and based on their lack of disclosure, and based on the fact that the V1 was made in China by Riot, I am pretty certain that this one is also made in China by Riot. I can't say that officially, but I can be pretty sure this is a Riot-made giant mouse. And they do work with Riot on some of their other knives. The action here, the grind, all of the details of this look and feel like Riot. This is probably Riot. So there are your specs. What does this knife do well? Section two. Well, the first thing that is very obvious with a knife like this is the carry profile is fantastic. If I pull out my small Sebenza here, it's another knife that does this very well. When you've got a knife like this where the blade pretty much folds up into the handle and that handle is not that tall to begin with, this is a 3.4 inch knife. So again, a full size blade that takes up relatively little space in the pocket. You fold this up, it's not that much bigger than your small Sebenza, which is not a very big knife. You compare this to another full-size 3.4 inch knife, the PM2, and it's not even close. You can see this is not the blade, not that much smaller than a PM2 when it's out, 
but this thing is so in terms of length but this thing is so much smaller in the pocket than something that is bigger like your pm2 the carry profile on this and it's not that thick either again giant mouse is now insetting their liner so you've just got your micarta slabs here it's not thick in the pocket the contouring on the scales means it's easier to slip in and out of your pocket it's just a very nice carry profile this doesn't and 3.4 ounces is a reasonable weight this doesn't feel bad in your pocket at all second thing your ergonomics on the handle so first off as i mentioned a couple of times already they have fully contoured this micarta here and then added some nice bevels all the way around the edges and that contouring does really help with the ergonomics it's just nicely rounded in your hand it's a very comfortable knife especially since micarta as a material tends to be tends to just feel a little softer the g10 might feel a little just colder and more slippery because they do make this in a full blacked out version with black g10 and a black blade but as giant mouse tends to do giant mouse is designed by jesper voxness and jens anso who are two of the most well-known and most well-loved and reputable custom makers in the business, in the industry, and it's for good reason. They do amazing things with ergonomics. The ergonomic lines on this are subtle but very effective. You've got a pretty good belly here. It really pinches toward the back there, a nice big swell across the back, and a really nicely done finger choil here that isn't too big, but it is a plenty useful finger choil. This ends up being, this grip here is ergonomically fantastic. This choke up grip, as Giant Mouse tends to do, you get a little bit of jimping right up on top of the blade here, nice place to put your thumb, and it is absolutely functional jimping. That keeps your thumb right there. This grip here with the finger up and the pinch grip is really nice. You have tons of control over the blade. The rest of this handle, this is the fattest part of the handle right here. Your fingers can grip onto this. This is super super secure middle finger goes right in that finger index the flipper tab works the ramp super secure really impressed by this grip feels very good also works nice to pinch grip where you're grabbing the blade like this it's a blade that works very nicely very naturally in that sort of pinch grip and again your fingers can anchor right on the back of this flipper tab here and even choked back this big palm swell and this palm swell across the back it fits very nicely in the hand and you're not too far from the cutting edge even in a grip like this because they kept that choil pretty reasonable and put this this front uh this front finger groove right up next to that flipper tab you still feel like you have a lot of control over the blade so small thin knives like this can often have ergonomic challenges this one does not there are obvious limitations just it's not a large object so you either got larger hands or you just want a more hand filling knife it just won't do that but given that they are working with a small knife here they have done about as great a job as they possibly could with the ergonomics on this handle and that really helps it be an enjoyable knife to cut with it also makes it a very versatile knife it is a knife that you can hold back here for more aggressive cuts where you need more leverage you can choke up here for more detail cuts get right up to the edge of that blade you can pinch it for your finer detail cuts it works very well in all of those so there are very few circumstances where this knife feels bad it feels pretty good at everything which is a great characteristic for an edc knife to have third thing similarly to the ergonomics this blade shape is just nice and simple and useful. This is a very, very sort of standard blade shape here. You got a very high tip, right in line, straight line across the back there, and the whole thing is belly. Not a ton of distal taper through most of the blade, but it does taper pretty aggressively toward that tip. You can see it carries a flat all the way out to here. It is technically a saber grind even though it's uh, flat from, I mean, here out, and it's mostly flat this whole way. But this is a very nice piercing tip. And again, it's helped by the ergonomics. Because this blade is so easy to control, it's always very easy to get this edge exactly where you need it to. Kind of feels almost like a steak knife in the hand, like a very good, very ergonomic steak knife. And it's just very easy to control, very easy to get where you need it to to get the knife where you need it to. And then still, if you need to do those longer cuts because it is all belly, 
it's very easy to guide the knife through the cut that whole way. And because the blade isn't that tall, if you do need to get down to that tip for your utility cuts, your drag cuts, it does it very well. Kind of like the handle, it's a very good EDC blade design. It does everything well without doing anything exceptionally well, um, which is great for what they're going for with this knife. The action is solid once you get used to it. We'll get into the action on the bad, because there is some bad for the action. But once you get used to how this wants you to flip it, it fires out very nicely and drops relatively nicely. Um, it's more of a shake shut than a drop shut. But most of the time, I will just sort of slam it down like that. And it's a very nice and satisfying action. This is a strong detent. We'll go into that more later. But it's smooth. It's on bearings. And it's a good, solid action, nice and clicky, nice and firm. No blade play, nothing like that. So if you like a firmer flipper action, it works very nicely. But it's definitely a firmer flipper action. And the other thing that's very nice and worth noting about your Sonoma V2 here is that it directly addresses some of the major issues with V1. I sort of opened with some of those. V1 had, I mean, this lock bar here, the fact that if you put pressure on the lock bar, this thing basically wouldn't flip, was basically a fatal flaw in V1. You had to be so careful around that lock bar. And frankly, you go back to 2019, this was a problem with a lot of knives. Shiragorovs were having this problem in 2019, but it was really bad with the Sonoma V1. But beyond that lock bar issue, the V1 was also kind of a chunky, heavy knife. It was meant to be a little bit more urban, but it felt unrefined isn't the right term, but it felt more heavy duty than it needed to be. And so it felt like a big a bit of a chunk in the pocket, felt like a bit of a chunk in the hand. This one is much lighter. It feels more elegant. It feels much more precise as a result. This grip here, choking up and doing these precision cuts or using it for that lighter duty work, didn't feel nearly as nice on the V1 as it does here on the V2. So despite the fact that this is the Sonoma V2 and not a completely new design, they have very directly taken some of the things that were a little more lacking about the V1 and improved on them in the V2. And this is absolutely a better knife than the V1 for most people, unless you really like that V1 aesthetic. So I deserve kudos for that too. There are two major places where this knife struggles both of which are practical issues more than aesthetic. Um, let's get to that action. So the action, again, is very nice once you get used to it, but the key thing is once you get used to it. Oh, and let's go to section three here. First, this flipper tab. This flipper tab slants away from you, and it's got jimping toward the tip, but this is not the sharpest jimping in the world. It's also not just the sharpest cut jimping in the world. You combine that with the strong detent, and this is the most aggressively light switch knife that I have felt in a flipper tab in a while. So light switch means you have to pull this down towards you rather than pushing it in. If you pull it back and you pull it entirely straight back, it will flip out reliably. But even here, I had to push pretty hard to get it out. And if you put any of your pressure down into the knife like that, it just won't go. You've got to pull it back. It's a finicky detent, and it requires more effort than I would like for it to take. Especially because it's not even like it's the crispest detent in the world. If this had a real kapow detent break, and it felt super, super crisp, I might be able to tolerate it. In terms of, you know, the detent break, it's fine. It's not bad, but it's not exceptionally good either. And so the detent doesn't really, maybe it does need to be that firm, because maybe it would be bad if it wasn't. But really, the detent just feels firm without any payoff for that firm detent. Now, the caveat I have to give for this is I've owned a bunch of Yens on so Customs. Yens has been my favorite maker basically since I got into knives. Back when I had that expensive custom collection, four of them were on so Customs. If you've ever handled a Neo or an Orso or his newer Isola, Yens likes his detents very, very strong. The Anso Neo is somewhat notorious among custom knives for having these incredibly strong detents. They are finger bruising detents. They're incredibly crisp and smooth once you break that detent and they feel very satisfying, but boy, oh boy, are they stiff. And so 
that's just the way that Jens likes them. And so this, this is better than some of his customs in that regard, I'll put it that way. So I don't think this is an execution thing. I think this is exactly the detent that they intended on the Sonoma. It's just the caveat that this is a stiff detent and no coming in, especially if you're used to lighter flippers and frankly, most modern flippers or even just flippers with a more aggressively finger grabby flipper tab. Not like this one, which is not actually, if anything, is sweeping away from your finger. This is going to feel hard to actually for a little bit until you get used to it. Second part, functionally, this blade is kind of fat behind the edge. 130 thousandths and not that tall of a blade. It's a simple fact of geometry. This is not going to be a slicing beast. And it is not a slicing beast. It does not feel like it. With a, with a flat ground like, grind like this, which isn't even technically a full flat grind, the great part is that it makes this relatively tough and you combine it with a tough blade steel like LMAX and this is an EDC knife that you can push, that you can beat on a little bit. And if that's what they were going for, and I know they're sort of trying to bridge the urban and the outdoorsy vibe on this, then they succeeded in the sense that it's not like it's dull. It's not like it's not going to do your EDC tasks, but when you start to do the more delicate task with this, it very much feels not sharp. Um, I use this in the garden for a little while. One of the ways that I love to test edge sharpness is I love to cut relatively delicate plant stems and things like that because it's, it's sort of like what chefs will do when they do their tomato test. When you're cutting plant stems or like cutting fragile tape, things like that, you really get a sense for if the edge is sharp and if it will keep cutting once you break that edge. And this thing basically mashed the plants more than it sliced them. And I had a bunch of other knives with me that I was trying around at the same time. And this was the worst slicer of the bunch. It wasn't bad. And there have been no actual daily task where it's been like, okay, this thing is so dull that it's frustrating to use. But the fact is, this is just, the geometry is just not that acute on this one. And so unless you lay the edge back really aggressively, which I might do if I decide to keep this, it's not going to feel that sharp. It will be sharp enough for all your tasks, but do not expect this to be a supreme slicer. Again, I have to believe that's an aesthetic choice. Um, I personally would have preferred this knife with thinner blade stock, but the action would have felt a little different. It would have felt a little lighter, a little less. I mean, that heavy detail, it does feel heavy. Then there's a nice feel about that. And the ergonomics would have been a little different because when you make the blade stock thinner, you're making the whole knife a little bit thinner. So I believe that this was the intent, that they didn't want to make a Supreme Slicer. They were okay with a knife that is tough, because this is tough. This is a lot of blade and a lot of LMAX, which is a tough steel. This is a tough EDC knife. But that also means it's not going to be the greatest cutter you've got. Fit, finish, and value. Section 4. Solid. This is a $195 knife. That is LMAX. Made, again, I'm almost certain, in China. With green micarta here. Liner lock. Brass backspacer. Everything is done nicely. Your satin finish on the blade here is nice. Pretty standard belt satin. And then a perpendicular belt satin on the flats. Nice little detail. The edge came to me very crisp from the factory. Very crisp, very even. Not quite even side to side, but close enough. A little bit of crowning on the spine, which is nice. There's lots of uh, sneaky jimping here. There's jimping on the back of the blade here. There's jimping on your back spacer. And then there's jimping on your flipper tab there. It's all done well. I wish it was cut a little bit sharper across the board, but it's consistent in the depth it's cut to across all of that. The handles are very nicely fit and finished. Solid micarta here with some steel inlays for stiffness. Actually, is that side even inlaid? That side might not even be inlaid. I mean, this is a pretty thick slab of micarta. Um, but... Nice little bevel on the front. I always like to see that little bevel there. It helps with your pinch grip. The contouring is very well done, very even. The screws are all evenly proud in the sense that the dome is sitting pretty consistently above the screw, so that's deliberate there. Backspacer is nice and flush. Everything fits together nicely. Your liner lock access is plenty fine. 
Um, again, you know, the way they cut this choil is very, very nice. It's very effective. Um, no issues with lockstick or anything like that. Solid action. I Meaning, like, the bearings are functioning perfectly. Nothing is off smooth. The detent um, ball is nice and early, so it drops very easily. Very good fit and finish in general. It is a simple knife. You know, you got a pivot collar there, brass pivot collar. It is a simple knife. Not a ton going on in terms of materials or complexity. Though this is, as you look closer, a relatively complex handle shape. You know, there is contouring here and a, a variety of lines here. It's not like this is just another stick or another slab sided something or other. For 195 bucks, it doesn't feel it's certainly not a great value. It doesn't feel terrible either. It's a better value than Giant Mouse's used to be. Giant Mouse's used to feel expensive. This one is in sort of their current batch, which is it feels fine. Um, obviously, $195, that is a very competitive price point for knives in 2024. There's a lot of very good competition in this sort of EDC shape and size range. If you like a bearing action, you want a good flipper tab, you like this material, you like this design, you're going to be fine with the price here. The fit and finish is really what is carrying it to that price because this is a very well finished knife for $195. Nothing bad there and there's nothing in the design that is complexity that's bringing it to that level. Um, I also, I'm totally fine with LMAX at this price point, especially for what they want this knife to be. LMAX is a great steel choice. It is a very solid all-around steel, especially for something like these tougher use cases. Um, I'm totally okay with that. So value here is fine. Fit and finish is very good. It's not an ambitious knife in terms of its fit and finish, but everything they intended to do, they did well which is typical for Giant Mouse these days. They have stepped up their level of production and their level of quality really seems like in the last 18 months or so. Which brings us to section five, our conclusions. So the main conclusion about the Ace Sonoma V2 is to harken back to its history. This is a significant improvement in every functional way over the V1. You may prefer the aesthetic of the V1. I actually personally do prefer the aesthetic of the V1, but the V1 was a clunky and at times frustrating knife to use. This one is doing exactly what Giant Mouse intended it to do in every way. Do I wish it was thinner? Absolutely. Because then it would be a better EDC knife for me because I like my blades a little slicier. But Anso and Vox have been doing this game for a long time. This is exactly the blade they meant to make. They meant to make a blade that was tougher, even though that would mean compromising on edge sharpness a little bit. And so you've got an all-around blade that will not be a supreme slicer, but will be able to take a beating. Again, it holds very well in this grip, and you can get a lot of leverage over this blade. If you're breaking down a bunch of cardboard boxes, I would, it's fine. It will be comfortable even for those extended sessions. I would be okay using this on, on housework. I would be okay, you know, ripping through drywall and even cutting some carpets and stuff like that with this knife, um, which you can't say for a lot of knives with this sort of slim profile. The great handle ergonomics help with that. So they were trying to make a tougher, beatery sort of knife. They chose M LMAX instead of M390, that sort of thing. And they achieved that. But for me... I do wish it was a little thinner. I wish it was a little sleeker. That action is still frustrating to me. It's objectively fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but this is a very hard flipper tab. And you've really got to focus on that action to get it to go out properly. The first few times you flip this knife, you're probably going to fail it and it's going to be a little frustrating. You'll get used to it, but again, it's another design choice that just isn't quite the way that I would prefer it to be. But altogether, this is a thoroughly solid everyday carry option. 195 bucks, good materials. And by the way, one last thing I forgot on the fit and finish. So interesting little detail about Giant Mouse. One of the ways that you can sort of see the differences between their Chinese and their Italian made knives is how they finish this micarta. This is canvas micarta, but it comes off as pretty smooth. There's still a little bit of grip, but it, it's borderline polish. Um, if you look at something like, and this is even Linda Micarta, something like their Clyde, even as it wears in, it will still have that texture. And if you look at the Rio, which I reviewed not that long ago, 
The Rio has a ton of texture, even as it wears in. The Italians tend to finish their micarta a little bit rougher. Uh, the Chinese, again, just from any anecdotal evidence I've got, seem to finish their micarta a little bit smoother. I prefer the rougher micarta, but that is very much an aesthetic preference. But to get back to the summary overall, this is a thoroughly solid EDC knife. At 195 bucks, there is nothing that is egregiously wrong with this. There are a couple quibbles. Even those quibbles are really more design decisions where what I want this knife to be is not what Giant Mouse wanted it to be, and so I can't even fault them for that. It's just a disagreement because they seem to have executed the knife that they wanted to execute here very well. Even those quibbles are far from deal breakers. Do I wish this blade was sharper? Yes. Is it sharp enough to do almost all my cutting tasks? Also, yes. And if I really wanted it to be sharper, could I just lay the edge back? Also, also, yes. It's fine. The ergonomics are fantastic, especially for a knife this size. The carry profile is really, really good. Um, competing with some of the best in the business. You just saw me miss on the flip there. Um, you get a lot of knife into a very small carry profile here. Not a lot of weight. Very nice to hold, very dynamic in the grip, works well in a lot of different grips. Blade is a very versatile blade shape. It's just a good knife. And there's nothing that you're gonna throw this knife at that is going to feel bad for, except for maybe your very lightest duty EDC tasks where sharpness is really, really important. And so the fact is it really comes down to, you know, that $195 price point is also hyper competitive. You've got stuff like the TRM Atom here. You're in the same price point as your PM2s and stuff like that. Um, you're above the price point of a lot of the other EDC phase right now. You know, your DECAs and stuff like that. Those are meant to be lighter knives than this. They're not really competing, but you're, you've got some very good competition around there. So this is really going to come down to an aesthetic decision in terms of recommendability. This is a very aesthetically nice knife. It also happens to be a very functional knife that is aesthetically nice. If you like the aesthetic, if you like Anso, you like Vox, you like the way this thing looks, you like a heavier flipper action, and you don't mind giving up a little bit of edge sharpness, especially because when the handle ergonomics are great like these are, a little bit less sharpness becomes less of a problem because the knife is so pleasant to hold on to that even when you, when you have to push it a little harder, it doesn't feel nearly as painful as it would if the ergonomics were worse. So that forgives that a little bit. If you're okay with all of that, then you're gonna enjoy this knife. This is a very good knife. It's competently made and very well designed. Just know what you're just know what you're getting into. If you're coming from stuff like Spider Co's, if you're coming from stuff like Benchmade's, uh, if you're coming from those knife companies that really put an emphasis on sharpness and those that have you know even lighter actions or just are easy and fidgetable in that sort of way you're probably going to be a little frustrated with this knife when you get it but that's just the way that Anso and Vox chose to design this so those are my thoughts on the giant mouse ace sonoma v2 a very good knife Probably, honestly, not one that I'm going to keep, but that has as much to do with my preferences as it does with anything about the knife itself. There is no way that I can say that this is a bad knife. A lot of ways I can say it's a good knife. It's absolutely the best version of the Sonoma. Hope you found this helpful. Didn't even come close to the 15 minutes this time. We will try again next time. Um, and uh, I will see you again soon.